That's not a bad one, dude. Vegan. Yo, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to another episode of Kicking Their Bass TV. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. Before we even hop into this video, we're gonna be running a giveaway for y'all. We're giving back a lot this year, and uh, we gotta start off this video with a giveaway. We got a couple packs of soft plastics right here that we're gonna be giving away, little worms. And I'm also gonna be giving away a Kicking Their Bass TV hat right here, but I'm actually gonna autograph it. So we're gonna do this live on camera right here. If you guys want to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed to your boy's channel, hit that notification bell, also hit the like button on this video, and if you could, you know, drop some comments down below on um, some of the content that you guys wanna see in the upcoming episodes. I'm gonna probably sign this on the white. I can't really sign it on the black with this black Sharpie, but uh, let's go ahead and do it. Beautiful. Look at that right there in the inside. So if you guys want to enter this giveaway, follow all those steps. We'll be announcing the winner sometime next week. We're going to be running giveaways in pretty much every single video. So make sure you come back to the channel, support your boy. We're giving back to the people this year. But today we're out on the Ogeechee River and we're going to be hunting for some bass and we're going to learn a lot of things today. So we got a couple hours before it gets dark. So we're going to go ahead and get out there and go make it happen. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Hit the like button. It helps me out more than you guys know. I really appreciate it. We got our big bass energy on. If you guys want to check it out, kickintheirbass.com. Link will be down below. Also, if you want to check out any of the Kicking Their Bass TV combos, spinning combos, bait casters, those are only available on kickintheirbass.com. So I'll leave the link down below. If you want to support your boy, I greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and hop into this one. Right, guys we just got to our first spot we're starting off with this little texas rig got a little uh curly tail worm on here we're gonna see if we can get a couple fish in the boat real quick i have a spot in mind that i really want to go to but i was like why not stop at this spot i think we can get a few fish in the boat right off the rip and then go over there it has been pretty cold this last week i don't know how these fish are going to act and uh yeah i mean we're going to figure out what's going on today and hopefully put a lot of fish in the boat that's the game plan i really want to get into some big ones too i feel like this time of year is when uh i end up catching a lot of the bigger ogeechee bass so we might have some good luck today as far as size goes we're just gonna have to cover some water put our heads down and see what we can do hey this is Callan and this is slap man All right, y'all, we just got to our second spot. That that first spot was kind of a, a miss, but it was worth trying. I just hope the fishing's not ultra tough. I think we're gonna catch them pretty good in here. I haven't hit this spot on this tide in a very, very long time, like probably eight months. So I'm just gonna be kind of hunting around, but I think we can catch a few here, and I think we have a better opportunity of hooking a big one. The last time we came here, one of the last Ogeechee videos, um, I did lose a couple fish that were really good. So. We might be able to catch us a few uh, tanks real quick. That's what I'm hoping. I want to see a big. And they should be here, man. They should technically be right there on this point. I mean, this water's pretty low right now. There should be at least one fish sitting right there. I can't believe something didn't slap my ham right there. I, I really thought well, that was it. Holy cow, that was a bite, bro. Like that thing vibrated all the way down to my toes. This is what we need to do, guys. My gut's telling me, should I rig it up on a spinning combo? So this bait that I'm about to tie up is some juice out here. I caught a lot of big ones on it last year. And it has to be this massive, no, I'm kidding, not this. All right, I'm gonna cut this off though. You know what I'm about to tie on, Cody? Come on, dude. Can you guess? 
a great bait. Luke? Yeah. I think they're going to eat it. Yeah. I think that's the money. I need, so, <clears throat> and the reason I'm saying I think they'll eat it is because I've only had one bite today, right? The bite that I had, and, and I can't really judge the whole day off of one fish, but I can put a little bit together. I will say with the fluke, I can skip it way under these trees. I can get it in the right spot. Not only that, but with that one bite that I had, he wasn't wanting to hold on to it. I'd rather put something in front of his face that I can twitch and give some sporadic movement and kind of trigger him, trigger him to eat that rather than dragging a worm to where he can kind of be picky. So I think the move is to put on this fluke. We can skip under these lay downs real good right now with it being low tide. And I think it's gonna entice some of those bass, especially the finicky ones, to kind of fire off on the bait and commit. So that's the game plan. We're gonna put on this weightless fluke and we're gonna start casting this around a good bit. Uh, last year, you know, I came in here with a weightless fluke and caught multiple four pounders. So maybe that's the way that we're gonna get, get some big ones to bite right now. Let's give it a shot. I just had one right there, buddy. That literally that quick, he grabbed me, he grabbed me. Hmm. Luke is a killer bait on these rivers and I, I haven't thrown it in a minute for some reason. It is definitely a fish killer out here. Perfect cast right up on it. Yeah. These fish just might be towards the mouth. That's where I had the bite. I got a couple ditches I think we could go hit right outside of this. Um, this time of year, then ditches get really good too, especially on this low tide. They kind of stack up in that deep, deepness of it. But, I mean, there should technically be a bass right here. There should be a couple bass up there. Could be a bass right here, too. And this is like, you got all this current flowing out. And we're only in a foot of water, but it rides this bank edge. So these fish will sit here on any of these little current breaks or under any of these laydowns and be able to ambush the bait. Like, there should be some on this bank, huh? how it lays out it's like a little flat right here gets a little deeper on the edge has cover right there man like, come on maybe i just need to work it slower all right guys so we just learned something which is awesome i'm not mad that we didn't catch any fish yet it, these fish aren't in the creeks right now the water's too low it's lower than i thought those fish are going to be in the main river so we're going to go head out there's a few ditches I have in mind. We're going to go hit those ditches, and I think we're going to pull up and we'll get them right away. Yeah. That's not a bad one, dude. He choked that fluke, bro. That's exactly what I want to see right now. That's a fat guy. He's not big, but look how chunky that monkey is right there. Look at that. He's a monkey. He's a monkey, dude. It's not a bass. Give him a banana. You thought this was a bass? Did you really think this was a bass? I was thinking it was a monkey. I mean, I thought it was a dog, but. So you reassured me. These fish are so funny out here, man. We talk about it all the time, but look how small his mouth is, man. That's a good little bass. I mean, he's not big, dude, but like, what a brute. That sucker was chomping on that fluke. That's a good sign. So guys, we went up river, you know, we were trying some different spots. It just wasn't happening. And I knew that these fish were gonna be on the main river once we hit that first spot. So I was like, you know what? Let's go hit some main river stuff. So we went to our, you know, our original stuff. And dude, how long have we been here? Cody, two casts? Yeah. <laughs> I, I ended up hooking one. So that's a good sign. I think we were about to get on them. So. Stay tuned. It's going to be good. Hit the like button. I appreciate y'all. Let's do it. I ended up breaking off that Texas rig. You know, I've been throwing around that fluke and I just, I don't know. I, I couldn't get 
anything to really pull the trigger on it. I caught that one fish at that one cypress tree, but that spot right there, I usually get a bite. And most of the time I miss the fish, but the spot that I'm sitting on right now, it, I'm not gonna say it's hit or miss. It usually always has one, Cody, right? Yeah. There's usually always one here. So I can't say it's hit or miss. It's hit or miss depending on how many fish I catch. Like sometimes I'll pull up, catch one or two or three. Sometimes I'll pull up and catch 10 but I haven't had a bite. So I think we need to switch to this Texas rig and really try that out real quick. So we're gonna tie one up. Were you about to let me tie a hook, Cody, without a weight? Is that what I just witnessed? Hey. What kind of friend are you, bro? Blue I'm, I'm here for the blooper. <laughs> He's just gonna watch me do all that. I do that a lot more, like, than, I've done that a lot. I've done it a few times, yeah. It happens. I it's feel like it's we the all worst have. whenever you just broke off and you know there's a fish there. And you're like trying to hurry. And you're trying to get back to the spot, yeah. And you, you tie it on and you're like. At that point, you might as well put a weightless sink or a weightless <laughs> fluke on and just yeah. throw it in there. But, whatever. y'all let's talk about today let's talk about what's going on let's talk about what we could do better and how we can get on these fish because i'm gonna tell you we haven't been out here too long when we come out on the geechee we're usually out here between an hour and three hours you know but it has not been happening and i just gotta owe up to it i'm not catching the fish right now i don't know why but we're about to figure out why so we have a great little talking point that we're gonna harp on for a minute and maybe you guys can get some value out of this. Maybe we're going to learn about it today because maybe we're going to do this and then it's going to turn our day around and we're going to start catching some good fish. So let's kind of recap on what we did. We went up river. We hit a creek. It, the, the water was lower than I thought. Okay. We didn't have any bites in that creek except for one. Well, that told me these fish are out in the main river. So then we started hitting some main river stuff. First spot we pulled up to, second cast we caught a fish. We caught him on a fluke. He had to react to that. I wasn't working it slow, I was really moving it. Okay, so that makes sense. We hit a couple more main river spots, nothing, which is crazy to me. We did have a big cold front blow in, in the last few days and these fish are shaken up. The water temps have dropped a lot since the last time I've been out here. And I just think these fish are not active, they're really not feeling it. So in my head, when I have a super tough day, you would think that you want to throw a worm. You would think you want to throw something slow to where you can present it right in front of their face. But that's just not the thing today. So I'm thinking in my head, what can we do to trigger a fish to bite? Because at the end of the day, this river does not change much between spring, um, summer, fall, and winter. It doesn't change much. These fish are at these locations that we're going to. We know this river very well. I know where the fish sit. When I come out here, I know exactly where we're about to catch the fish. So they're seeing our bait, but they're not wanting to eat. So what we're about to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie on a spinner bait. What is a spinner bait? It's a reaction bait. You got a couple big blades on it. One is gonna put off uh, a little bit of sparkle with that sun being out today. And two, it's gonna put off a lot of vibration. It's gonna put off a lot of thump. Not only that, but that bait's gonna be moving the whole time. So the reason we're gonna tie on a spinner bait right now is because we wanna go past that fish's face and irritate him. We want to fire him off to bite our bait. If we present a worm or if we present a fluke in front of his face, they might just look at it, but they don't wanna commit or maybe they'll just nibble at it. If I put a spinner bait or a crank bait or something that is a little more aggressive and fast pace in front of their face, it can create that reaction bite. Even if the fish is slow, bass are predators. So bass react to things. That's why you can twitch something really fast and then have a fish eat it. It's because they can't take it. They, if they see something going crazy, they have to eat it. That's just how, that, that, that is a bass. The, a bass's first instinct is to trigger off on something. So we're gonna put on a reaction bait. 
We're gonna throw this spinner bait around lay downs. We're gonna throw it around current breaks. We're gonna throw it on the main river. And we're gonna see if we can fire up some of these fish. We might even go fish some of the spots that we hit before to try to prove this concept. There's not many days that we come out on the water to where we're just not catching fish. And today has to be one of those days. Cody, you've been working with me for a year now. How many days have we gone out and just haven't had much luck like today? I think one, one time. And like, that's impressive, bro. Like I, I have to give us props to that because you know, this is a part of fishing. You're gonna go out and it's gonna be tough sometimes, but today it is ultra tough and we're gonna put our heads down in this last hour or so and really focus on what we can do better and try to learn something today. And I hope you guys learned something too. And if you've already learned something this far in the video, hit the like button. It really helps your boy out. I greatly appreciate it. Well, let's go ahead and hop into this, grab our spinnerbait box, see what we wanna put on. I'm gonna talk about the color, why I wanna put that color on, and we're gonna hop into it. And maybe we can turn our day around just like that. So let's do it. All right, here we go. We got our spinnerbait box right here. So when it comes to picking out spinnerbaits, we got a bunch of different options in here. Actually, I have different buzz baits. Um, with this water out here being in a river, it's slightly murky, but it has that clear tint to it as well. It's more brackish water. I guess that's the best way. Um, you know how that brackish water looks. What What's the name? What's the word I'm looking for? Tannic water. It's got that brownish tint to it. Um, with that being said, I kind of want to use something that's a little brighter. I want to put chartreuse in this bait. So we got a few spinner baits in here. I'm going to actually pull this one out. This is by Strike King. If you guys want to check out any of the Strike King baits, I have a discount code down below um, in my link as well. You guys can go in the description box and click on that. But this is a half ounce spinner bait by Strike King. This is white and chartreuse. It's got a gold blade and then a silver blade. These are both willow leaves. A little less thump we're gonna tie this thing on and uh, go from there so that white and chartreuse action I've had a lot of luck on that on the rivers out here I think that's a great overall spinnerbait color has to be one of my favorites so that's that's what we're going with today pretty little bait and uh, yeah we're about to get to work guys we're gonna cast this around a lot we're gonna hit a lot of spots really quick we're not gonna spend a ton of time on these spots. We're gonna throw this in the hot zones to where I think bass are gonna sit in the current breaks on the opposite side of the logs. Um, big old brush piles, we're gonna throw this thing in and work it really slow. And the trick with the spinner bait is to let this bounce off the cover because that's what's gonna end up creating that reaction bite for the bass. So let's go ahead and hop around. We're gonna hit a lot of spots and let's see if we can fire these fish up today and learn something. I don't like how this current's pushing me up in this. big oh not big not big not big okay okay that the way that that sucker loaded up on it cody what is this five cast in brother yeah switch it up you switch it up we live and we learn and we're showing it to y'all today so we all learning in this video look at that look at that man yeah, isn't that rewarding yep that's that's what you got to do guys we we're just talking about it when i threw that cast up there one thing that I like paid attention to is I threw it up there and I let that bait fall just a little bit. So when that bait was falling, those blades were fluttering. And then I had a good like steady retrieve and that's when he hit it. All right, y'all, we're sitting down and I wouldn't say I'm mad at myself, but man, it was a tough day. I only caught two fish. Like this doesn't happen often. Like when me and Cody come out to film, we're filming to film a video. Whether we catch them or not, we're filming a video. And we've just had a great year. Like 2021 was an awesome year for fishing. We only had like one day to where we, it, like it was like this. And uh, you know, that's just the reality of fishing. You're gonna go out sometimes and you're not gonna catch them. You're gonna go out and have a struggle. I know we weren't out here long. If we were out here all day, it would be a different story. I believe when we tied on that spinner bait that that was exactly what those fish wanted. We caught a fish right off the rip with it. But I think the problem was... You think we tied it on a little too late? I think we tied it on a little too late and I think that we missed the tide. The water already came up, what Cody, like four foot? Yeah, fast. Boom, like that. Like when the water goes out, it's more gradual. When the water comes up, it's like that, man. And uh, it, it just caught us off guard, but 
Guys, I wanted to post this video to show you guys the reality of fishing. This happens to everybody and don't feel bad if you go out and have a rough day because it happens to every fisherman out there. And I hope you guys got some tips out of this video. You know, I learned a lot today. Um, even though we didn't really get to put that spinnerbait to work, that we figured something out with that and it, it was just too late with how the water level was changing. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. If you could, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend. Get somebody new into fishing. I love you guys so much, and I'll catch you all in the next video.